Hey there, welcome back to Lima Bean Living. I'm coming back from taking a well-needed break from YouTube and thought this would be the perfect one to kick off my return. Today we are going to be making this fun little kitchen table playhouse for the kids using pretty simple supplies. I can't wait to show you how I made it and all the little details too. So without further ado, let's get into this. To create this house, you are first going to need to pick up a canvas drop cloth that is large enough to cover your entire kitchen table all the way down to the floor. To calculate the size of the drop cloth you will need, just measure the length and width of your kitchen table and add two times the height of the table to each of those measurements. That will give you the length and width of the cloth you will need to create a fully enclosed home for your kids. Then I grabbed some of the remaining paint from when I painted the mural in Aubrey's room, which if you didn't watch that video, make sure you go check that one out after this one. I will link it above and in the description box. I also grabbed some painter's tape, a brush, scissors, measuring tape, eyelets I bought from Walmart, a hammer, and some other supplies that I thought I might use. The first thing I did was try to get the tarp somewhat center on the table before marking where I wanted my door and windows for the house. Now I'm not going to lie, the perfectionist in me really wanted to come out and make sure everything was center, equally distant, parallel to the floor, and well, perfect. But I've come to realize that when I plan for something to be done absolutely perfect, I tend to procrastinate and put it off and then it never actually gets done. Especially if I'm filming it for YouTube, it's just a disaster. I had this tarp actually for weeks before I mustered up the courage to finally create this home for the kids. I made peace with the fact that the kids wouldn't care if one window was slightly larger than the other or if the door wasn't perfectly rectangular. They would just be happy with the fact that they have a new house to play in rather than just hiding under the table all the time. So I tried my best to avoid wasting time with my measuring tape while taping off my door and windows. I also wanted to add little window sills where the kids could display flowers if they wanted to as well. You will see in a bit how I planned on making that happen. I do want to note that even though this is a canvas drop cloth, you will still want to place cardboard or some other protective layer underneath while painting because it will bleed through a little if you paint as heavily as I did. Let's take it slow, where you go I go to And if you hit the bottom I'm going down with you Let's take it slow, who cares where we gotta be You know you'll have a good time wherever you're with me Let's take it i 
So after the paint dried, I cut open the openings in the windows and made slits in the door so that it could be rolled up or stay down for a closed look. Then I moved on to adding some eyelets to the design. I actually used these when I made my busy books for the kids a few years back. They are very easy to use and make your crafts more durable. Essentially, you take one wide mouth eyelet and a narrow mouth eyelet and sandwich them together on either side of your fabric where you have a little hole. Then you place the base tool beneath the bottom eyelet and the top tool on top of the other side, the upper eyelet, and hammer away until the two eyelets become connected and secure. I'm sure you can find a nice tutorial online if that description and these, you know, video angles don't give clear enough instructions. I just can't let you go. Lord knows that I've tried to. You said I was the only one. No one likes being like to. You made this mess and left me with the pieces. Now I want to burn all the bridges between us I decided I wanted three eyelets on each windowsill for fake flowers to be placed, and I also added two above the front door so that the door could be rolled up and then we could use some twine to tie it up through the holes. You could also use some Velcro here or sew on other pieces of fabric to secure the door as well. So I could have easily ended things here, and I kind of did for like a day or two because I didn't want to have a bunch of paint or like wet fabric out while Jack was awake and able to, you know, move around and mess things up. And as you can see, the kids were already so excited to start playing in their new home. I trimmed off some fake flowers from some Dollar Tree bouquets and we inserted them into the little eyelet holes in the windowsills. At first, it looked like this was gonna be perfect, but unfortunately, I did notice that some of the flowers were a little too top heavy, so in a bit, you will see how I solved that problem. Let's first move on to finishing up the corners of the home. As you can see, there was quite a bit of extra fabric at the corners of the table. I figured I could remove some of it for a cleaner look and so that I would have some extra fabric to create little pockets on the inside of the house to solve my flower problem. So we are going to round off the corners of the drop cloth. Again, this doesn't have to be perfect, it just has to get done. Once the corners were removed, I cut out some rectangles slightly longer than my window sills and used both hot glue and some E6000 to secure it to the inner walls of the house. I made sure to have it cover the eyelet holes so that when a flower was inserted from the other side, the outside of the house, the bottom stem would be forced to remain in the pocket and therefore stop the flower from being too top heavy. This really helped the flower stay upright in the window sill.
Next, we are going to add some Velcro to the corners of the house, about halfway up the house. My initial plan was to put some eyelets here on the corners so that I could put a string through them and tie them together to create a more secure home. That way, if Jack tugged on the fabric, it wouldn't immediately slide off the table onto the floor. I also considered sewing on little ties at each corner, but I wanted to avoid sewing as much as possible because that really isn't my strong suit. So I got some Velcro from the Dollar Tree crafting section and used both hot glue and some E6000 again to secure like five inch strips of it to the outer walls of the home. I just kind of eyeballed them. They weren't all perfect and that was okay. I used some clips to keep these in place until the glue had dried and then repeated these steps on the other three corners as well. Okay, so it is day three of working on this table because I can really only get things done during Jack's nap time. And we are going to add some more fun details to this house. I thought it would be fun to add some more windows to the sides of the house as well as another style of door. I have to say using a blow dryer really sped up this process, which I greatly appreciated. I thought this window was looking a little sad and lonely, so I added some shutters to either side for some decoration, and I really think it adds a whole bunch to the look of the house. I still had some extra fabric from the corners of the house, so I thought I would paint like a section of it and then cut it out in the shape of a vase so that I could glue it to the inside of the house for flower storage as well as some decoration and encourage kind of more play inside the house. I loved this added touch and it really feels like it finished off the home.
Now this is where I ended up deciding I was done. I considered painting the top to look like a roof and who knows, maybe I will in the future. I also considered painting plants at the bottom of the fabric where it hits the floor, but again, I thought that that could wait. What I love the most about this project is that it feels so big when you're playing with it, but then it takes up very little space once it's all folded up and stored away until the next playtime. Let me know down below in the comments what you would want to see me add to this house if I ever get around to it, and if you plan on making something like this for your little ones. Don't forget to hit that like button, and if you are new here, I would love it if you stick around and subscribe and see all that I have to offer, and I will catch you in the next one. to the end of the video. If you didn't know already, every Monday and Friday you can find motherhood and lifestyle content on this channel. And since us moms have to do it all, that may mean yummy recipes, easy DIYs, mom hacks, cleaning and organization, or just a combo of everything. Please know that you are loved and you are made for greatness and I will catch you in the next one.